Hi everyone, James here. Welcome to another video. This is going to be the second instalment of my uh, big Oxfam uh, mega haul. For those of you who tuned into the last instalment, I explained that um, there had been a kind of record day in my local Oxfam. I was told about it when I was in there doing a bit of digging through the usual rubbish. The guy who ran the shop told me that they'd had a, a big consignment of great stuff and that I should come back the following weekend. Uh, I wrote it in my diary and then um, I went back and, uh, and then I ended up making two subsequent trips in order to pick up things that I'd been strong enough, strong-willed enough to leave there the first time and then that sort of classic thing that you do, you then start thinking, why didn't I pick that up? I need to go back. So that's what I did. Um, in last week's instalment, or the instalment I did a few days ago, I showed you some kind of 80s, late 70s, old pop post-rock finds, uh, the au pairs and altered images and Voice of the Beehive from Boy 3. So today I'm going to show you the classic rock that I picked up. Now there was a very large quantity of classic rock in the shop. Grails, things I've been after for ages, just really nice pickups. I did a classic thing, I, 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 I made a classic mistake. I saw in the window they had a copy of Deja Vu by Crosby, Stills and Nash and I said to myself okay I'll go in I'll have a little browse I'll perhaps get a stack together it won't take me long and then I'll go and get it from the window I went in there and I wasn't in there that long because there was so much great stuff kind of immediately on show that it didn't take me long to get my stack together went back to the window to grab um, Deja Vu and it had gone so uh, therein lies a lesson if you see something in the window that you've been after for ages don't wait just grab it just get it you know so it became obvious to me, it's my usual stomping ground. You've got boxes along you know, the side, but they had a few stands um, set up in the shop as well with uh, things that you could immediately see right okay. Um, you know, Neil Young albums, things that you never see in the wild, stones, um, all sorts. There was a lady in the queue in front of me shelling out, I think she was paying £60 for an original British pressing of Electric Ladyland. So, yeah, I mean, the guy had not been wrong. There was some tremendous stuff there. Now, I was, I was quite strong-willed in the end because I sort of went in there with a subconscious decision in my head that I wasn't going to spend more than about £12 per record. And it was a good job I did that because there was some stuff on there in there for sale for, you know, £20, £25, £60. And, you know, as time has worn on, I've got less and less shelf room and less and less money. You know, I, d I just decided let's just try and curtail the amount per record because I walk out of there with more things if I can just restrain myself. And that is exactly what I did. The, I think the most expensive record here was £13. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of quite pleased that I did exercise restraint in that respect. OK, without any further ado, I'm not going to spend too long talking about each record because I have 12 records to get through. And I have gone through on Discogs and tried to identify what these records are. So the first one, uh, Zuma by Neil Young, an album that I've had on CD for many years. I've been looking at reissues of it online, wanting to get it, but I just never pulled the trigger on it. So I got that one that was on reprise. Possibly my favourite of Neil's kind of heavier guitar based records. Now that one was, let me see, make sure I get my facts straight here. Uh, that was a first UK pressing according to uh, the uh, um, according to the runout groove. And I mean, it's in really immaculate condition. So uh, I was really pleased with that. You know, I think so anyway. I mean, it's kind of so immaculate, it almost makes you wonder whether it is some kind of repress and what they've done is they've just used the original, um, you know, dead wax code. Um, does that happen? Answers on a postcard. This one has never particularly been on my grail list. I've got it on CD. It's not one of my favorite Neon albums, but it is just in the most beautiful, beautiful <laughs> condition. Uh, again, it's on the Orange Reprise. Now this one, uh, Neil Young, American Stars and Bars, this is variant three of an original UK pressing from 1977. So again, whoever had these records, you know, has really, really kept them immaculate. So there we go, fantastic. Now this one I was delighted to pick up because a while ago I'd seen a copy on my local market stand. It was a record that I'd always wanted. I heard good, good things about it. I know the artist, I love the band that he was in, but the copy that I kept seeing on this guy's stand had some really nasty 
cover damage and this one is completely immaculate beautiful condition this is Ian Hunter I don't know whether this is his first solo album it's just called Ian Hunter obviously the guy from um, Mot the Hoople released in 1975 I think has a lovely uh, inner And this one is on CDS. Uh, now the pressing, this is a first UK press again from 1975. So like I said, whoever this person is, they've been collecting records for a very long time. They've kept them in pristine condition and then they've possibly died, you know, I suspect. <laughs> or they've had a divorce and they've had to move out of their big palatial house where they've got miles and miles of shelving and they've had to move into a little bed sit where they don't have any storage space for their records but you know why why you would keep these records in such immaculate condition for so many years and then get rid of them is anyone's guess unless you're dead um this one was in pretty good nick slightly there's a bit of kind of dirt on there which i've tried to clean up uh not very well Planet Waves actually is is a really good album by Dylan. I mean, it's not one of his kind of all time top draw ones, but what I love about this is actually the performance of the band, um, as in you know the band, the band, Levon Helm, Richard Manuel, Garth Hudson, Rick Danko, Robbie Robertson, wonderful guitar playing and uh, just ensemble playing. It's got that kind of really loose, funky kind of feel to it. Really, really good album. And interestingly, this one is on the Island label. And I was just, I was um, talking about this on Facebook with a couple of people, John Downing and a couple of other people, just agreeing that you don't often see, well, I've never seen Dylan on uh, Island. So uh, that was rather kind of strange. This is not a first pressing, but it was, uh, it was released in uh, 1974. So again, you know, a really nice early pressing uh, of uh, Planet Waves. Okay, so next, a little run of Lou Reed albums. Now, there were a lot of Lou Reed albums there, including a couple that were too expensive. There were one or two for kind of, you know, pushing £20. I left them there. There were also some kind of lesser Lou Reed albums, you know, ones that are not very well regarded from his career. I've not heard them, you know, but I mean, they were going quite cheap. They were going for about maybe £5 a piece, but I mean, I was already spending too much money. So I, I left what um, I left those ones there. I bought the ones that I knew from having them on CD. I mean, I have bought a lot of records here that I have on CD already. Beautiful copy of uh, the Bells, really pristine. And this is an album that I I really love actually, uh, from 1979. It's one of his more kind of strange, arty ones, really. Like I said, I'm not going to do a big history on these, <clears throat> but. Um, Really, really delighted to pick this one up. Uh, this was, let me just see, five ninety nine, but it was worth it. Definitely worth it. Lovely condition, you know. Um, let's have a look and see what the record is. Oh, it's just on a wrister. The bells. Let me see uh, what pressing it was. It was the okay. It's a first pressing from uh, the UK and Ireland uh, from nineteen seventy nine. So um, there was that one. I was not going to leave it there. The next one, uh, I didn't know much about this one. Actually, I don't have this one on CD. This is um, Legendary Heart on uh, RCA. It's a bit of glare from the window this morning. I apologise. Lou looking very, very cool there. At the inner. What a cool dude. <laughs> Uh, this one is an original French pressing from 1983, so again from the year of release. Why it's a French pressing, why this person, if it is the same person, why he had a French pressing of the album. Anybody's guess. Perhaps he went to France on holiday and was a compulsive record shopper and uh, picked that up while he was there. So there was that one. And this one was the best of the bunch of all the albums I picked up on that first instalment. I was just so beside myself with joy to get a truly immaculate copy of uh, New York, an original UK and Europe pressing from 1989. It sounds incredible. Definitely my favourite Lou Reed album. Maybe. Definitely maybe. That was an album. Yeah, Lou Reed, New York. 
and that was the princely sum of 5 99 so yeah even if I'd just walked out of the shop just with that one record I would have been delighted you know absolutely delighted and this one actually was the most expensive Lou Reed album I picked up um, this was 9 uh, Berlin his classic uh, gloomy masterpiece oops with some sleeve damage to this one but the record is in lovely condition it comes with the booklet Uh, this one, let's have a look and see, from 1973, uh, a UK pressing, not a first pressing, but an early one. Some true horror stories connected to the making of that record. That, that awful story where he wanted to have the sound of someone crying, a child crying, so he got the producer to tell the child that its mother had just died. Horrendous. Okay, so that was my first trip, and I left loads of stuff there, and I was gutted because I thought, I thought I had picked up this, which is a grail for me. I've been after this for a long time. Love this album, Street Hustle by Lou Reed, and I forgot to pick it up. I thought I had picked it up and it wasn't in my stack. I got home, I took a photograph of all the records and put it on Facebook, and it was only when I looked at the photograph I thought, hang on a minute, where's Street Hustle? It's not there. And I couldn't go back the same day. I had to wait <coughs> about three days to go back. I was convinced it was going to be gone went back to the shop and it was still there. In fact, lots of records that I left behind were still there, including a lot of the sort of £20 ones, you know. I think he's going to have to drop his prices to get rid of some of those. Uh, but anyway, Street, ha Street Hassle by uh, Lou. Now, this is an original Greek pressing from 1979. So, again, if this is the same person, we have a well-travelled record buyer, wonderful pickup. One of my favourite Lou albums, and I picked up this, which I'd left behind, and I thought, why, why am I leaving this behind? You know, nine ninety nine for a copy of the Rolling Stones between the buttons, which is one of the big gaps in my Stones collection. Not a record that I kind of knew. It, could, I mean, it, it comes from that wonderful, mysterious period with the Stones, where you know Brian Jones was in the band still. They were still sort of trying to compete with the Beatles by being quite kind of English. Chamber pop, very uncharacteristic for the Stones, but some really interesting material. Must do a video on this at some point. Uh, this is actually a German repressing from 1982, so it's not an original, but it's just, just in lovely condition. Uh, so there was that. And then while I was there, I picked up this one as well. Now, Steel Wheels was also there, and I left that one behind because it was £10 for Tattoo You. Again, just a record that was a gap in my collection. One of the Stones' better latter-day records uh, with the inner. It's the album that features Start Me Up, of course. Again, I, I keep saying it, but just really, really good condition with the classic uh, yellow Stones label. And... I had decided that that was definitely it. I was not going to go back, I was not going to get any more records. And then what happened was, I had to have a wisdom tooth extraction. About maybe a week later, I had to have this kind of almost an emergency extraction because I had toothache. And I'm not kidding, it was horrible. I was in a lot of pain. People who know me on Facebook will know that I was I was kind of posting about it and swearing because it really was agony, you know. And uh, I phoned the dentist and said, look, I'm in, I'm in so much pain. I'm trying to prepare for my son's birthday party. I've got to go and buy balloons. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. You, know, you need to do something for me. So she called me back into the surgery. I went in and she prescribed me antibiotics and she prescribed me some painkillers, some strong painkillers. And I felt a bit better after that. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to go back to that shop one last time on my way home, cheer myself up. And I went in there still with a kind of, throbbing mouth and finally pulled the trigger on a beautiful beautiful copy of black and blue one of the other big gaps in my collection sorry with the gatefold this is an original uk pressing from 1976 in absolute well not mint but as good as can be you know black and blue Again, sort of, you know, one of my favourite Stones albums in a way. It's not kind of known as being their greatest work, but it's an album that I do really enjoy. 
particularly when the summer comes around, so I bought it at the wrong uh, time. But that kind of cheered me up. And But in fact, <laughs> I felt better and I went home and then I had the most awful agony in my mouth for the next half hour when I got home. So perhaps it was somebody up there trying to punish me for being um, too self-indulgent. But anyway, so that was the stack, plus the ones I showed last time. Okay, folks, so just three channel shout outs before I go. The first one, Doug at Factor City Vinyl. Doug, I don't believe I've ever given you a shout out on this channel. I, I do apologise. I know you've given me plenty of shout outs in the past. Doug has been on board with my channel and I with his for a long time now. Fantastic channel, reggae specialist, but he shows a lot of good things. And every week his updates become more and more eclectic, you know, more and more interesting. It all contained a bunch of, uh, you know, Iranian pop albums, you know, really, really good stuff. Absolutely fascinating. And he does great commentary, you know, really well researched. Uh, he does lots of videos with the blue sky behind him as well, you know, nice videos to watch. Uh, the second one I want to mention is Kit, Hippie DJ Kit, um, a Greek collector. If you haven't checked him out, please do so. He has an amazing collection, a, a truly incredible collection. All kinds of amazing things, psych and reggae and rock and just astonishing stuff from all around the world, you know, world music. All in great condition as well. He appears to have an apartment just ram full. And watching his channel is a bit like having this weird kind of dream. You know, you have these kind of dreams where you're seeing all these records that don't really exist, um, but you want them to exist. I, 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 and that's what his channel is like. And the final shout out I want to do is for a new guy on the VC, Jeff. His channel is Tone in Grooves. He's just started, just launched his new title sequence last night. Absolutely great channel there really thoughtful commentary shows some great things has a really big collection you know behind him in the video but uh, a really nice addition to the vc so check him out as well that's jeff at turning grooves i'll put the links down below got a few more videos coming in the next few days want to give a big thank you and shout out to everybody who's been watching my last few videos particularly the, uh, the videos i've made i've made a few special videos in the last few days a couple of mccartney ones um I did a video about the uh, the first Wings tour and I went and did some filming at my local university where um, Paul had played there. And then I did another long video on, on the on the uh, partnership between Paul McCartney and Denny Lane. And then, and last week or two weeks ago, I also did a big thing on Tom Petty, Full Moon Fever. And I just want to say, just thank you, to, uh, you know, all the people who commented on those videos. I'm always amazed because I make those videos and they're quite hard work, you know, all the video editing and so on and I always think to myself you know why why am I bothering who's going to watch these videos and I'm always absolutely humbled and honoured um, when people do watch those videos and enjoy them so thank you very much indeed and just on a more broad level thanks to everybody people who make videos people who don't make videos loving the VC at the moment uh, it's keeping me sane really so uh, <laughs> take care folks, stand by for a VCLT video or, or two in the next week or two, uh, along with a couple of other special features as well. So uh, have a great day, see you soon and live long and prosper.